Hi, welcome to another exciting Mac 7 tutorial. This is tutorial number 45, using audio to drive effects. Well, when last we left, we were listening to the beautiful soundtrack to uh, the Crash Test movie. And um, as exciting as it is to just hear sound, we have the sound coming out. I guess I better turn this down a little bit. So just rehashing here. Um, we have the new JIT movie tilde object with the audio outputs here that you can run through an audio effect if you want. And we will get to that. But we're going to do something a little crazier first, which is we're going to drive a video effect using the sound. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just stop the crash test movie and get a movie up here that has a distinctive sound to it. And one of the movies that comes with Mac so that everybody can be on the same page here is a uh, basketball, which I think is just the B ball movie. So let's see if that works. Um, B B A L L. And I'm just going to lock my patcher, command E, read it. There it is. Look at that. And so the nice thing about boom, boom, this movie is the boom, boom. And you get a nice, a really good change there. So I'm going to turn that down a little bit for the moment. And let's pull our, um, let's pull our, objects down here a little bit just to give us some space to work and then we'll put our video over here where we want to work with it and let's just say that we'll try using brightness um, today with our with our video so what we're going to do is is have the audio drive brightness so we go over here um, if your patcher is unlocked, you type N, you type uh, JIT dot B-R-C-O-S-A, JIT, Burkosa, which I think also means brightness, contrast, and saturation. Yeah, that's it. And so we're going to run the, the video through JIT, Burkosa, and that will run our effect but now we have to actually run the effect well how would we run the effect we can put another object in here that says prepend um, brightness and so any message coming through here now we have a control message that we're going to send into JIT Burkosa and we're going to prepend it brightness so whatever number we send in here Whatever number comes into here, it's going to get brightness tacked on the front of it. And then JIT Burkosa is going to say, aha, brightness somewhere between 0.0, .0 and 1.1 .1 is going to be the brightness. And so we'll put a little floating point up here. Type in F. Now, a lot of times people use a number box. I'm going to turn that down a little bit more. I know. Oh, lock your patcher. Command E, turn the volume down. We'll have it back in no time flat. A lot of time, um, unlock your patcher again, people use an integer box um, by accident. And since an integer box will only be zero or one, and the range of brightness is essentially from zero to one, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good to just go from zero to one. That'll be from absolutely black to full brightness. So we don't really want to do that. So here's, you want to have a, a decimal. So we can check out how it's working here. And as soon as I start scrolling on it, we'll see what the effect is. Uh, see, it's quite dark when you get down to zero and even negative. And then as you turn it, whoops, <laughs> got up, up there pretty quick at one, it's at one, if I can get to just one, there's one, it's normal. And then as we go up 
to maybe two, it's really starting to blow out. And up at four, oh my goodness, it's super duper bright. I don't know how high you can go with this, but let's just say that by the time you get up to 12, you've really blown it out. So concept, conceivably, our range could go up to about 12 if we wanted to. And we're going to be able to set that. I'll just leave it at one, which is normal. Okay. So what we're going to want to be able to do is scale that. And that's easy to remember how to do because it's the same as the name of the object. So unlock your patcher, type N, type scale. And we're not really sure what's going to be coming out of the sound. So we're just going to guess. Type 0.0. .0 to 1.0 and we're going to scale that from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. When you do that in scale that means the incoming number, this is the low, that's the high, and then the output number, that's the low and that's a high. So we connect that to here and we're, we're going to adjust this in a minute. Now we need some sort of input from sound and the way that we get that is by using a an object called average. So we're going to go up here, type the letter N, type in A, V, G, and a tilde because it's sound waves. And um, I don't believe there's any parameters for it, so you just type that right on in there and connect that to the leftmost inlet. So that output to that inlet. And now we connect the sound. We could do right and left. We could do either one. We could put it on this end of the audio. But no, 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 we don't need to do that. We, we don't need to listen to the sound any more than we have to. I'm going to use some segmented patch chords just to keep things neat here. And um, connect to that average object, connecting, connecting, connecting. Segmented patch chords, by the way, for those of you who haven't figured it out, is something that's available up in options. I love segmented patch chords. I can make everything neat. See, segmented patch chords. So now we have our average averaging, but average needs something to be able to average, which is it needs to know how often to do it. So what we need to do is bang on it every now and then. As so many things in Max, that's what happens. Um, so what we want is uh, to type the letter N. We're going to use a metronome, metro. And we'll make it go, eh, we often do 40 times a second. It's pretty fast. And then we'll put, um, we'll connect that. And put. I heard there's a trick that if you leave something highlighted and then go up above it, we, we want to toggle. So I'm going to leave this highlighted. This is just a tip and trick here. I'm going to push the shift key and then I'm going to put the letter T. Boom! Look at that. It's connected already. I have saved myself six seconds of work. Anyway, so you make a toggle by typing a T and you connect it down here. If you didn't hold the shift key down with this highlighted and learn that new exciting trick, you can just connect it with a cord. And then we're gonna uh, type, um, actually, let's do something else as long as we have it unlocked here, because we're not sure this is gonna work yet. So knowing what we know here about adjusting the inputs and the outputs, um, we're, Actually, I'm going to do something else too. I'm going to move all these up, move my patch cords up, and I'm going to put a, another float box under here so that I can see what's coming out of average, and that way I can guess better what I'm doing. So now, doing another trick here, I'm going to highlight this cord, I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to type the letter F for float box. Boom, it's connected to both of those. I love this trick. Okay, so now once we turn on the 
once we turn on the metronome, we can see what is coming out every time the basketball hits here. So every time the basketball hits, you'll see this number jump. Boom, boom. But it only comes up to about 0.01 or 0.02. So we're going to want to scale that up a little bit for the output so that it makes a, a, some difference to the brightness. So the way to do that would be unlocking the patcher and um, just, you know, more tips there. Hold the Option key down and click on that float box and just keep doing it until you've got four float boxes up there. Connect their left outlet to the next four inlets, meaning inlets two through four. Two, three, four, five. Two through five. And now lock your patcher again. And so this float box here is going to give you the minimum number that's coming in. So this is going to scale from zero to something else. So we're expecting a fairly low number coming in here. So it makes more sense to scale only up to, let's say, uh, 0.1 or something like that. And then we start seeing uh, sort of like a lightning strike over here every time the ball bounces. I'll turn the volume up so we can sort of hear it happening. There it is. Okay, so we see it starting, so we can either lower this number to make it scaling up to something that it can... Boom, boom. So it's going up to about, on the output side, about, I, I see the numbers just flashing by about three or four at its, at its highest. Well, that's a good way to get the bright part. Now, on the output side, here's the output minimum, and you might want to set this at the bottom of, maybe you want to be able to see this, so you can turn this one up, and that'll set the, min the minimum brightness. So now you can have it almost all the way bright, and when the basketball hits, it's sort of like a lightning effect. And uh, likewise, you could set what it's scaling up to, which is right now one, but you could scale up to five. And that just blows it right out of there because the ratio of about 0.1 to five is much bigger than zero to one. So now we're getting a real lightning strike there. So you can adjust these and um, set them as you like, and you'll be able to have your audio drive just about any effect you want to. In this case, brightness, but you could drive delay, you could drive, you know, some sort of mosaic pattern, just about anything. Just have to find out what it is you're going to drive. So that's really it. Um, a little averaging, a little metronome to drive that, and you have audio driving a video effect. That's it for today. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.